Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our WCN Influencer Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher McClellan, and I am so excited because I get to talk to somebody from Louisiana today. It's my <laughs> second home state, and we're in Baton Rouge and Lake Worth, Florida. I think we're going to end up trying to get some beignets somewhere along the line. Oh, it's good soil. What do you yeah. think? Sounds good to me. I, we should be meeting like a Cafe de Mon in Jackson oh, Square and just kind of kick back. What do you think? Yes, that's the spot. That is the spot. <laughs> that is. I love talking Louisiana. Now I want. Now I'm going to want gumbo and shrimp creole and. Come on, Goodness. come on over. Come on. Yes. What's your favorite dish? What's your favorite dish? Oh, I'm a gumbo girl. I You're have, a gumbo? Yeah, yeah. I, I love yeah. gumbo. So that's, yeah. that works for me. Yeah. Yes. And you also love working with caregivers. Oh, I do. Yeah. I do. I love it. Because caregivers love it. can find a foothold with you. Oh, look, that's what it's all about is finding yeah. that way that fits for your life uh, for supporting the needs of someone you care about. Yeah. 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 And it's so great to have you. Uh, a part of the whole care network and talking about caregiving from a, your perspective and mm -hmm. your story. And, mm -hmm. but all of our listeners and viewers want to know about your story as, as an occupational therapist. How did, how did you get into the caregiving side of this? Well, you know, in providing occupational therapy services, uh, you have to interact with someone who's there to support the needs of the person that is going through an illness or the things that come with aging. And there's always a limit that you see in someone's life who's going through uh, a difficulty. And so in caring for that in, in the occupational therapy setting and caring for that person, I realized very early on that that caregiver plays an important role in meeting the goals and meeting the ability of that person to work toward regaining their life. And so having that caregiver involved in that process is essential. So uh, that is my heart is making sure that caregiver re is able to remain uh, because if the caregiver leaves the picture, then things don't often go well for those who have lasting um, deficit. So I love the caregiver and I love the heart that comes with it. And But I also know those challenges that come with caregiving because I've been that caregiver uh, yeah. a great portion of my life. And so my desire is to really support them in supporting the needs of their loved one. I, I always like to say that there's no strangers when it comes to caregiving. No. We may not know each other personally, but we do get to know each other. But through our stories, you know, we're story sharing, whereas where diversity meets the road to collaborate on a common cause. We, you know, we, we, we know I you like when we don't know you personally. And that's, I think that's exactly. one of the beautiful things about, you know, talking to other caregivers, both here in the United States and across the globe is we all share this passion and love and, oh, yeah. and our stories that really tell people why we're doing what we're doing. Yes, exactly. You know, I mean, caregiving touches all of our lives. Uh, it right. will look different and it comes at different junctures in our lives, but it is often the same story. <laughs> it has the same undertones, the same, um, challenges that a lot of us face and really the same rewards of stepping into right. that role of being a caregiver. So yes. Yeah, there's exactly. no greater honor than to assist somebody in their oh, time of need. Exactly. I yeah. agree with that for sure. Yeah. So finding a foothold. I you know when we were first introduced said that I really love that because we it, it, caregivers when they're in the midst of it of a care situation that's usually some form of an emergency or an un untimely diagnosis, and suddenly they're thrust into this role. And how do you find a foothold into it? Yeah. Because not most people, you know, most people aren't well versed in uh, the medical field or the legal fields, and they're thrown right into it in the middle of an emergency. Yes. Exactly. You know, and when the name Finding a Foothold popped into my head, um, you know, it actually was out 
running one day after I had had a fall and uh, was just really being mindful of my footing. Like, okay, you know, make sure you don't do the same thing again. You know, right. you, you didn't see it the first time, but now be more aware of where you're going. Don't get too distracted, you know, and just the timing of that thought and something that I was listening to in my head, um, it collided. They were saying mm -hmm. the word foothold was was actually spoken into my ear <laughs> as I was listening to a book. And I thought it was just, I, I laughed. I said, you know, the, the timing of that thought and what came into my head was great. And I was actually thinking about what do I call my uh, new uh, consulting and coaching service. And it just sort of come together. And I actually go back to that thought in my mind often in that it's not that I'm no longer supposed to run. I'm not supposed to do the very thing that I, I think is a, a big part of my life. It's just that I do have to continue to be more wisely in right. the steps that I take so that I don't get injured, that I don't get caught off guard. And it just is just like, okay, continue, but have this more awareness of where you're going and what's around you and what's around you. And when you see those elevations on the road or those potholes in the road, that you have to plan for those and watch yourself, make pivots, you know. So all of this was coming together, Chris, and I'm like, this is a perfect name that uh, I can use because it's a perfect description of how caregiving is. Um, yeah. It, it, and that was one of my thoughts, I said, finding a foothold. It's like, yeah. oh my gosh, I, I remember when I first got uh, my first caregiving, I, I use this word kindly, you, my first caregiving gig I just, yeah. <laughs> uh, with Richard, you know, it's like, where do I, where do I, you know, how do I find my yeah. path in this? You yeah. Know? You know, then yeah. in 2011, there wasn't a whole much, a whole lot on the internet, but uh, you, you do got to find your foothold into this because you're, you're not just dipping your toe in, you're dipping the whole, <laughs> you're, you're, you're dipping the whole leg. In. <laughs> yes. And the ramifications of doing something, um, that can be harmful affects your whole life. Uh, right. that particular fall, I didn't end up in the ER, but there was a fall that I had that did result in me, yeah. like, you know, some injuries and had to go get checked out, but it definitely impacts your life when you are not prepared and we're not prepared for many of the things that come with caregiving, but you learn from those and right. you learn to navigate around those bumps in the road so that you can have success. It doesn't mean you give up, but it doesn't mean right. you see the pothole ahead, pothole ahead of you and then you go first you know head first into it no you got to know how to navigate around those um ebbs and flows that come with caregiving in order to you know finish the race well yeah i think that uh, and i and one of the words that come to mind when i think about you and the and <laughs> finding a foothold is that of a an advocate Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we all have these stories that we want to share, but that role of an advocate and to, to help people in their, in their journey is very prevalent in the work that you do. Oh, oh yes. Um, it's just finding that way that fits for you is what I advocate. It is that you take an inventory of what are the challenges? What are the needs of that loved one that mm -hmm. are presenting themselves? Um, what are those needs that are presented? And what can you do in the best way that you can to meet that need for that person? And really trying to find that way to bring those two worlds together. Uh, right. The world of where does their need begin? What, what is the end of what they can do for themselves safely? And what is the thing that you can bring into the picture? And I want to advocate for both ends. I, mean, I want to make sure that that person knows what they can do for themselves. Mm -hmm. But then also right. as the caregiver enters into the picture, 
really being an advocate advocate for them as well, meaning it's not all about what your care recipient right. needs in the way of you having to provide, be the one that provides all of those needs that my, my, my push is for that caregiver to recognize where their limits are. What right. is it they can bring to help supplement that need that is there? And what are some things that they cannot do? What are some things that are going to be so damaging to their lives that they are leaving that whole situation with, with such a deficit in their own life Mm -hmm. that it takes away from them. So I, I'm advocating that for That's the caregiver so to really take inventory of what are their strengths and what are their weaknesses and being okay with saying, this is where I end in my emotional and physical abilities. And this is where the plan and the gaps and all of the things that need to be added into the picture that surround me and support me in order for whatever that deficit is that yeah. is trying to be filled. Yeah. And I think that uh, you've, you've identified one of the big changes, I think, in the medical profession over the over recent time here where the caregiver is being recognized. Mm -hmm by uh, doctors, uh, physician assistants, nurses, occupational therapists, all yes, recognize yes, the, care, the caregivers. Yes. So, <laughs> but I, I think it's, it's more, it, 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 you know, we're so prevalent, caregiving is so prevalent now. And it's looked at as, um, uh, you know, as the conduit. You know, if, if I, yes. one, I, I had a, I had a guest tell me a number of years ago, we're, we're, we're talking about this and I, it always stuck with me. She was asking her doctor a lot of questions and, and she said, well, I hope you don't mind me asking all these questions. And he, the doctor's response, and I always remember this, the best patients are the ones who ask the questions. Yes. And that, and, and same thing with the, you know, the, the best caregivers are the ones asking the questions. That's being right. there. And being present and being recognized as a part of the care, as the CEO of the care team. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and making it okay to ask and having yeah. platforms or, or, or ways to make it safe to ask is, is right. really important because a lot of so, a, a lot of the stress and the challenges that come with caregiving is caregivers don't know who to ask right? and outside of that one visit from the doctor and the doctor is really, if you got one that's supportive, like you mentioned, getting those questions answered, getting those questions answered, uh, but things are not stagnant. There's just so many moving parts to There's caregiving a lot that of moving parts, it, right. it's, there are things that work for the now that won't work a week from now or two weeks right. from now and just really having uh, the ability to keep asking, keep asking as right. you are navigating um, the caregiving journey is a gap that is, has been really hard to feel for the caregiver in finding right. where do I go now? Where do I go now in order to keep things, um, to keep that, mm -hmm that joining together of providing the services that are needed, uh, right. you, you've got to have that. Otherwise you get stuck in a plan or a way that you were doing thing that is no longer conducive for your health and is no longer conducive for um, your loved one's abilities because you're not able to come up to par as those needs become greater. Yeah. And I always refer to myself when when I when I make some of these comments because I I had to learn I, I learned the hard way that um, uh, my caregiving cape is limited I can't do yes, <laughs> I couldn't exactly. do I can't do everything and and uh, but we want to do everything mm -hmm. but we also have to be mindful of our own health and well being because we're we're our care partners and I'm using that term generic yes. uh, we're their lifeline. And if we're yeah. not taking care of ourselves, um, there's usually not a plan B in place. <laughs> yes, you know, and I'm, I'm 
I'm all about that advocate for having that plan A and B and C and D and, and, yeah. and really evolving um, your role as things change in the life of your, in your life. And in the life of the one you're you're, you're caring for, uh, mm -hmm. things cannot be the same. Cannot expect not they, to change, and yeah, you've got they don't to be change. willing to pivot. And exactly one thing that I find is a big challenge for caregivers is seeing that things are not working, but yet not having that boldness to or no, not having um, not seeing that things can't stay the same. Let right. me see if I can word it a little bit. You yeah. know, you, you always want things to like yeah. from the care recipient side, they yeah. have their life that they lived for right. 50, mm -hmm. 60, 70 years that looked like a plan, a, a their plan, a right. their life. Mm. But there has to be a time when the norm of that person you're caring for is different. And right. caregivers don't often see that. They're still trying to keep that mold, that life, that plan, that plan, that that life cycle the same for their loved one. <laughs> but they're just forever changes in their life. And it's like more leaky holes in the bucket. And exactly. then the caregiver comes and they plug that in. And then something else leaks on the other end. So then they have to drop something else and come around. And now they got to come back on tomorrow because now mom is accustomed to having all of her laundry done on Tuesdays. And then mom <laughs> right. makes an appointment on Wednesday. And then, you know, then you all of a sudden, they have no life because their whole mission has now shifted, not from just, just shifted. providing for the needs, but trying to create this bubble that existed for 50, 60, 70 years and right. trying to keep it running clockwise in a, in a fashion so that their loved one is not made uncomfortable. And right. I think that is a big mistake if you're well, thinking you're right on that the spot on target. you don't want them to be uncomfortable. You still want mom and dad to uh, have their whole week look the same, but yet your week uh, and your life is totally yeah, in it's, chaos. It's in total chaos. And we, you know, we have this mindset that um, things are going to get better. Yes. And yes. The, the, the truth of the matter is things plateau yes and then they get a little worse yes. and then they get you know it'll yes. stay it could stay you know we want everybody to get better yes but the but the the stark reality of it is there's always a plateau and there might be a bump up just a little bit but it's always a, a level because there's you know there's two very common aspects to caregiving that we're never prepared for a beginning and an end <laughs> yes exactly yeah uh, and, uh, and you know that's kind of the stark reality of mm -hmm. the beautiful. I ah, get a little emotional. Uh, the beautiful roles that we play, as, as difficult as they are, it really is an honor to be a caregiver. It really is, you know. And there's no greater feeling when you can step in and really provide for that need of that person and allow them to sort of settle into um, life that is more, that's comfortable mm -hmm. for them and really feeling like you've done, you've done, you're doing a good thing. You know, that, that mm -hmm. really feels good. And we all want that. Yeah. But you know, there's a, that opposite side of that is if you take it to the extreme, and not really having that same lens on when you're really looking at your life and saying right. your life requires that same amount of attention. Uh, yeah. Even looking at the compromises that are going to be made and we all know life won't be the same, but right. in finding your foothold means what are going to be oh. those things that you say in your life? I, I can't compromise on these. I yeah. really need to keep, these things intact and I can compromise on other things, but I am going to, am going to make allowances for their needs to be added around right. what is already in place for my life that I can't afford to lose at this right. point in time. So. Yeah. Cause you know, the, 
easier said than done, self-care. I, I've i kind of changed because I know caregivers are real tired of hearing the word self-care. So I said, well, what about self-compassion? Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to say no when it's appropriate. Oh, absolutely. And for me, um, self-care is not one of the terms that I like to use often yeah. as well because – I like to really think about it if make things so efficient in the way of how you're going to craft your day through setting limits on what you can do till I wouldn't have to tell you to take mm -hmm. care of yourself right. because you're going to set in place by looking at the need what is the support you can give what are the other things that can be brought into the picture and forever navigating that and having difficult conversations and even going into areas where other people are not really in support of you being right. looking at your life, but having to say, no, I'm just still going to have to do this. And you just really concentrate on doing the things that fit for your life right. around the, the, the compromising, because that's always going to be there. I wouldn't right. have to tell you to do self-care because self-care right, automatically it, gets factored yeah. into mm -hmm. the equation. You know, I yeah. think when people preach self-care, it just, it, it can make uh, it, someone feel like I can't do another has, thing. Are you telling it's me a now? It's, it's, a, a it's actually a negative. Me? Yeah. No, yeah. I just want to show you how you can continue, you can continue to do what your heart says to do in a manner mm -hmm. that allows for the self-care to all be ready be just in a, it's place a, and it's you, a part of the routine it is a part of the routine and it's already put in place first that right. and mm -hmm. but you don't know this in the beginning as a caregiver you're jumping in right. there all hands well, you're, on you're, deck you're, you're, you're putting yes. that foot. You're putting that foothold right in the pot. That's, yeah, and that's how caregiving. And when you say the start of caregiving, that's how it starts for many of us. We're just know, jumping I, in. You know, I'll I'll ask you. This is my, my, I've been asking this question. I've been asking this question for years. And so, Consuela, have you met anybody that has caregiving on their bucket list of things to do in life? Not at all. Not at no. all. Now I've had some people. I've I've learned, and it's been great. Some people have chosen to be caregivers. They, yes. They've um, uh, their spouse or their partner has oh, yeah. uh, has a condition precondition, and I, my heart goes out to those folks that you know. know I, but you know, I can say I actually knew early on I would be my mom's caregiver. Yeah. Just because of what I do for a living and what the lifestyles and the comfort levels of my sisters are and their strengths mm -hmm. and weaknesses. I actually knew I would be the one. You, you had and that. so I was always never wanting it to happen, but I'm like, okay, yeah. mom, it was always in the back of my you mind. You just knew. I yeah. would be her caregiver. So I did yeah. have things in place, had a lot of things that I thought would, oh, my mom would just willingly come and it'd be happy, happily ever after. But that didn't quite work out the way I planned because <laughs> she came kicking and screaming and didn't want to be here. And they didn't want to be there. Yeah. So it yeah. was a lot of different things that I have had. I had to deal with on that side of the yeah. caregiving, where yeah. I was physically prepared to care for my mom, but I wasn't emotionally yeah. prepared. That's a whole other. Or those I mean, challenges. we could do a whole show on Ooh, the emotionally. So that part is. Yeah. And I yes. think we probably will do a whole other show <laughs> on the emotional component. But you know, we've talked a uh, we've talked talked a, a, a lot about caregiving in and of itself, but let's yes. talk about Consuela. What does Consuela okay. like to do when she's not helping caregivers? Oh, wow. You know, I always say I have a boring, um, mundane life. I mean, I, I, it doesn't take a lot of excitement for me, but uh, I, I, I am an avid runner. So I do like. I think you just did a five k with the New uh, the, the with the New Orleans, Orleans Saints that yeah. I that I under yeah. And I did pretty good on that. So I, I do. I, I run several days a week, and so running is a big part of my life. Uh, but I also have other outside things. I like. I am married, and uh, so I have a great support um, person in my uh -huh. life. That's definitely so important. So important in me doing what I'm doing today, um, yeah. and. And also having, you know, still working uh, a little bit as a part-time occupational therapist during home health. But this mm -hmm. is in my 
off time. I, I mean, I, I, the running and getting to do some gardening. And I also participate in a mentorship group where I get to spend time, time with some high school students um, and trying to you know, trying to encourage them and being a mentor with them and helping with tutoring. Uh, so, um, and yeah, you have I, a podcast too. Yes. And yeah, I have a podcast. So I was, you know, going back into the world of finding a foothold. Yes, there is a podcast, uh, caregivers finding a foothold and it allows caregivers to just pose that question, uh, that, is a challenge for the, ev the everyday doing of right. caregiving. Like uh, yeah. you're having issues with a transfer, having issues with um, anything related to the doing of caregiving. Uh, and mm -hmm. you call the podcast, you fill out a form and I present the, um, you know, the question on my podcast and I give mm -hmm. you Lots of options to choose Lots from of options, right? mm -hmm. that can help make bathing a little bit easier or making a car transfer easier or just <laughs> just even navigating those emotional All times. Those tasks uh, that we're not, most of us don't know how to do that we're thrust into it. So. Yes. And yeah. helping you to streamline those opportun those tasks so that you have opportunities for yourself you know I, it's amazing when i see patients i see patients locally who would say oh it takes me three hours to get mom up cleaned up cleaned up getting her breakfast and by the time it's lunch i'm like what are you doing taking mm -hmm. takes you three hours i'm like okay let's see if we can get that down to an I hour think we can help you or out less. Now let's yeah. talk about some things that are no longer practical. Let's right. talk about what is a new way of doing things that number one, decrease your injury risk because some exactly. things that put Very important. you at risk for injury, risk for you injuring the one you're caring for. And they just, it just takes too much time. It's just no longer really the big picture in how the morning routine need the morning routine needs to look and so mm -hmm. it really just that's that's a big eye opener for people when they when they call in or i'm working with them one-on-one -on -one or in one of my group sessions and i'm, I'm talking about letting go of routines yeah. and re-establishing what the new needs to be in order for you to save time and energy so that you want to do something else other than caregiving because the way you're going, you don't have time you're going, and, and, and you uh -huh. don't have energy. So, And it's so good for the caregiver to have an objective third person that can look at a situation like yourself mm -hmm. and be able to talk uh, honestly, but from yes. experience that, mm -hmm. is, that is helping that, that caregiver who is not sure where to turn next, and oh, but they yes. can they can talk to a like minded person and and, Look, and, and, know, and feel I've, supported I, and feel that and know that I've had all the same feelings, <laughs> and I've made many of the same mistakes, yeah. and is 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 really an eye opener when I ask um, a caregiver, um, is this about control? <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, because sometimes as caregivers, we want to be in control. Yeah, control it. I'm the only. I'm the only one that can do this. Nobody yes. else can do this. Yes. I'm the. You know, I'm the best caregiver. It, is it your way or no way? Or... It's, 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 that's that's right. Yes. And, and it's and mm -hmm. it's about giving up. Uh, yes. Yes. There's there's so much to that because you can't do you can't do it all by yourself. Yes. Just as you can't age solo. You can't be a caregiver by yourself. So, Consuela, you're like, I just want to come to Louisiana and spend some time with some some time. Well, with your look, please do. We'll, uh, like I we'll said, we'll do I'll, Cafe Du Monde in the morning. We'll drive yes. to New Orleans and, mm -hmm. and we'll come back and we'll do some gumbo at your house. And we'll oh, just kinda... my, well, I didn't say I cook it. I said I eat oh. it. <laughs> My my mom taught me well. I know how she never wrote the recipe down, but I know what she did to make the make well, the. Well, you come and you cook the I would do that. I will and, do. I'd be uh, happy to do that. Know. So, well, no, I do cookie, but I would prefer not to. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, well, it's so great to have you a part of the whole care network. Oh, I'm and excited! You're doing to such be here. wonderful work, and so let all let all of our listeners and viewers know how they can be in touch with you. Mm -hmm. Well, great. And I want to say I'm, I'm so honored to be a part of the Whole Care Network uh, in how they have just 
they make it easy. They make it easy for me to want to continue to do what I'm doing because they provide the support. Uh, and it, it puts me in the company of other care, other professional caregivers who are like minded like I am. And so it's just an honor to be a part of oh, Whole Care you. Network. So thank you. Yeah, we're, we're growing because of awesome people like yourself who are oh. sharing their sharing their 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 talents and skills for the better right. of everybody in care but uh but yeah we let you know we'll we'll have all your contact information yes. in the show notes but but let everybody know we want to hear it from the source we want okay. to hear it from well, the source look, yeah. um, we've, we've talked about the podcast i have the caregivers right. find it a foothold podcast and there's a blog and those are on my website uh and what the the two things that i am very uh passionate about and that I, I I feel so proud of being able to assist people in uh, is in the group coaching program. Yes. I have two of them and the one that is uh, spe specifically for caregivers is called Unlosing You in Caregiving. And it is a group coaching that. program uh, uh -huh. where it's just a monthly subscription based program. You can sign up mm -hmm. one month. Don't come back the next month. Sign back up again. You can just different topics that I cover. I have a set of topics that I talk about each month. And mm -hmm. then I add topics uh, based on the feedback from a questionnaire. So I try mm -hmm. to make those groups uh, very personal. They're small in number. And uh, they're not recorded because I want you to feel like you can talk like, about what yeah. you want to talk about, what your challenges are. So it typically mm -hmm. starts with me having something that I had prepared. And then mm -hmm. the last end of it, end of that meeting is just what has sparked in, you know, in your in your in your mind related to the topic and really answering those questions on the spot of like, these are some things that you can consider and I'm right. taking note and like, okay, I'm going to send you all some, 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 some mm -hmm. PDFs on these different things or some links and really trying to support them in their, the current situation that they're in. So that is unlosing you in caregiving and we meet tw twice a month. Um, wow. and, and for the low price of $49 a month. And the, it's really been fun. And I feel yeah. like I have made some friends in that group and allowing them to be open and honest about their, their issues in caregiving. Yeah. Um, and my second one, and this is actually a new one, Chris, and it's actually, I'm going to sort of launch it in November. Uh, and it's going to be really targeted to those aging adults. Uh, because I am an aging in place, I'm a certified aging in place You're specialist, certified. and I am also a certified fall prevention specialist, um, in addition to being an OT. Uh, yeah. And I really want to talk to those aging adults who have concerns about being at home alone, uh, who may be getting pressure to maybe move outside of their home uh, because their mm -hmm. family members may be identifying some things that put them at risk for injury. So it's a whole aging in place um, group coaching and it is called uh, staying safe in your place. Uh, is staying the, safe. I like staying, that. Staying yeah. safe in your place where I go through a, uh, a whole safety list of things to consider in setting up your bedroom, your bathroom, the kitchen, mm -hmm. and really talking about different diagnoses and what are some things that typically come down the line in certain yeah. disabilities or diagnosis and how to plan for those things and how to make some modifications. In Having home. a plan so is half that the battle. So they can remain in their home and, yeah. look, and, and actually it's just really making those changes to keep them safer and making them more independent because if we can keep things on a a, a better, a even level in their life where they're making some some accommodations in their home, it will prevent that prematurely, that premature need of having to have a caregiver come on board mm -hmm. because we're yeah. going to maybe reduce some of the reduce falls them. that are happening sure. or yeah. set up the environment where they are more independent instead of daughter having to come over and you go. do X, Y, and Z. And sure. so we're, it's a, it's a win-win situation for that aging adult and as well as the caregiver. So that is another group 
coaching program that I'm launching in November. Busy, a, you're just a busy person, which is all good. And, I love it. So and you, yeah, that's and we'll have I all do. this information in the uh, show notes as well yes. as your on your landing page on the Whole Care Network. Yes. And I think you also have a course on WCN University I as did. well. There, there, yeah. there is a course called. Yeah. Um, Hospital, hospital to home. Get hospital your ducks in a row. Yeah. Get your ducks in a row. Uh, yeah. So, hospital to home. Get your ducks in a row. It's a, a webinar that's available. Uh, that sort of go through that whole process right. of what to expect during a, during a hospital stay, and what are the things that you need to have in consideration as they are moving toward discharging back home and getting you to getting you to think is home the first stop for them yeah. um yeah. in their hospital discharge all exciting so, so you know consuela yes. with the great work that you are doing you are certainly a wc influencer oh. and it is so great to have you a part of the network but it's also even better to have you as a friend thanks for i joining appreciate me that thank you so much chris